Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's riff, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about the Paradigm Founder 40B loudspeaker. Which uh, was a manufacturer I was not familiar with at all before yes. today. Well, they're from your favourite country, Mike. They're from my favourite place in my favourite country. Yes, and that would be? Uh, Toronto in Canada. Oh, I thought it was Wallingford in Oxfordshire. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why it's my favourite place in my favourite country? Uh, well, hang on a second. Is there any famous recording artist that comes from there? Maybe William Shatner? Uh, yes, it must be William Shatner. Yes, that's <laughs> right. Yes, If I had a hammer. Michael, J. Yeah. <laughs> Michael J. Fox, I know you're a big fan of. Yes. Uh, yes. Who else? Um, yeah. Celine Dion. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. No. <laughs> I can't think of anyone, anyone else. Um, uh, Neil Young was great, wasn't he? But um, could, they, could they be a, a three-piece power trio who we talk about rather a lot? Uh, uh, I've no idea. Tell us. Okay, no, we'll, we'll, we'll keep you guessing. So, All right. No, no one will ever know. No one will ever. So we have some Toronto speakers. Yes, we do. Um but before we, before we do this, Mike, I'd like to present you with a little gift. I don't like your gifts. The last, <laughs> because... time, the last time you gave me a gift, you gave me a pair, of, um, a pair of slippers you stole from a hotel in Japan. Yeah, or China, I can't remember. But um, a comfortable pair of slippers, uh, which I notice you're not wearing today, no. so that's how much you like them. But given your recent acquisition of a pair of quad electrostatics... Um, you know, you got. Can, can I just stop you here? Because, because just I want to remind you, the last present I gave you was the coolest lighter in the world. It was. It was a Casio calculator lighter, which yeah. was just absolutely. In fact, I, I, the only reason that is that I gave it to you is because I don't smoke, and yeah. um, and otherwise I would never have given it up because it's the coolest <laughs> present ever. So I just wanted to set the bar there. Well, I think I can do better than that. <laughs> I'm so, not enjoying this. And being a quad fan that you are, and also you you like playing records, I thought you'd... Uh, oh, my God. You'd like this, Mike. Is it like a Top of the Pops thing? No. It's Mantovani and, and his orchestra. And his orchestra. So, oh my gosh. quad electrostatic fans, they love string sound, don't they? And this has so, got the windmills of your mind on it. Yeah. God, heavens above. Yeah. What can I say? Another one. Thank you. These will go with the, <laughs> these will go with the slippers. Can I borrow your lighter? <laughs> Excellent. Right. Well, Good. Okay. Well, I'm glad you obviously look incredibly happy and, you know, struggling to put that down. Moving swiftly on. Yeah. Toronto speakers. Yes. Sorry for that uh, diversion. But, Paradigm. Uh, you know, it had to be done. Paradigm, yeah. So as um, uh, uh, my my colleague Paul Miller at Hi-Fi News always used to call them paradigm. Okay. But that's a joke because that's kind of, you know, they don't pronounce it like that. No. But, uh, anyway, it's, it's, when you're explaining a joke, you're losing, aren't you? Well, I normally have to, as you know. <laughs> so, but then I laugh yeah. at my own ones anyway. So, you you, do you have jokes, do you? I've never heard one. Apparently, so, I think I do. Okay. But I'm the only person. All right. Well, I will. Uh, I will get the. Oh yeah, we've got one. We've got them here. They're quite heavy. They are heavy. Oh. They are heavy. Excuse us. Excuse us, people. There we go. Oh my gosh, he's a ton actually. Yeah. Oh, oh it does. Yeah. Above. Yeah. Look at these. Uh, shall I do the um? What do you? What did you call me? A rear socket. Uh, socket botherer. A socket botherer. I'll do the socket yeah. botherer a bit. Yeah. As you can see, look, very nice binding posts. Uh, well, that's what I thought. Actually. By wired. Uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm not as much of a socket botherer as you are. Really nice but binding e posts. Even I thought they're those, gorgeous, aren't they? Probably the best binding posts I've ever seen on any speaker. Yeah. Um, and that's you know saying something. It but really is. They're gorgeous. They're, they're what I like about um, binding posts, proper ones, is you can put bare wire. Uh, in you the can actually, and it's got massive yeah. sockets for bare wire. Yeah. Have you noticed that? You could uh, get you know. Sort I, of, I have noticed that because I. Huge. I don't have speaker plugs. I know you don't. I use yeah, uh, bare yeah. wire. Yeah, it's so, a bit weird, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so there we go. So, um, uh, and ported at the rear. Yeah, quite large base port. Big old base port yeah. there. Yeah. But these are, uh, as you said, these are uh, from uh, Canada. Yes. Uh, uh, and um, The Paradigms. The Paradigms from Canada. And they, um, to me, so... Um, we've had a little bit of a disagreement about these, haven't we? A little uh, bit. For once. A little bit, yeah. Um, yeah. 
So uh, let me put it down. I, mean, I, I think that's killing I, they, they are really heavy. But I mean, the, uh, just see if we can get a, a close up. Obviously, we'll put some pictures on as well. But they're, they're beautifully finished. They are. And they're yeah. clearly pretty flipping solid. Yes. Judging by the way. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But, but they are gorgeously finished. In fact, I, and I was looking at these earlier, and I thought they were piano black. But then if you get them a certain light, yeah. they, they almost change colour. They do. You know, like you get that pearlescent paint on yeah. some cars. It's like that. They, yeah. they really are quite sensational. Yeah. And I like the design because they sort of taper inwards mm. uh, towards the back and they look really funky. Um, but I'm not quite so sold on the sound as you are. No, no. So. Well, so here's my so here's my argument in favour of them. Here we go. So uh, if you like speakers from uh, North America... So you're thinking Klipschen, JBL, yes, um, to, yeah. to a very large extent, maybe KLH and others. But in my, to, to my ears, they all have quite a distinctive flavour, just in the way that you could say a lot of British speakers have a, have a certain flavour as well. Yeah, very true. And British speakers, you know, certainly traditionally are very pretty smooth, aren't they? Uh, no big peaks or anything, uh, no big uh, sort of thumpy bass peaks. Um, and... Uh, uh, very sort of, uh, you know, kind of Radio 3 almost balance. Um, whereas uh, you could say that the that American speakers are, are more, much more Radio 1. Yeah. Uh, they're much more boom tiers, they are, aren't they? They are. They are. Um, and the, the really good um, American speakers, like big JBL Everest and things like that, are still boom tiers, but they have massive detail and power and speed, which is great. But the cheaper... JBLs, for example, just they lose all of that kind of depth and 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 uh, accuracy in the mid band, but they still have the the boom tiers a bit. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, obviously, um, uh, these are Canadian speakers. They're almost like the thinking man's JBL. That was my thing. So they're, they're okay. not they're, they're not taking the they're not really straight out of the American playbook of speakers, um, but they still have a sort of distinctive. North American sound, so they're good for rock. They're punchy. They're fast. They're crisp. They're engaging. Uh, they do have a lot of bass, don't they? Uh, yeah, yes, maybe. And yeah. I know, I know that you, as a quad owner, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I know you're not used to that mic, so you found it quite disconcerting at first. Like, bass. What's that strange <laughs> instrument going boom, boom, boom? <laughs> That's a bass guitar. Wow, do they do they make bass guitars as well as normal guitars? You didn't know that. <sighs> I have to put up with this. I have to put up with this a so, lot. And he's now got the Falcon Acoustics LS three five A's in his uh, second system. I have, I have, um, which I really like. Yes, I know you do. They're yeah. really good. So, they're like mini electrostatics. Yes, yes. They're cool. They're well, they're they're they're, <laughs> they're like a, a boxed uh, a box version of you of the quads you've got. They are. So you really like them. Yes. So, yeah. Um, sounds great with your Mantovani, doesn't it? <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you. I'll let you know. So, I, I apologise for the long, windy preamble here, viewers. But the point is, is that um, just any excuse to have a pop at me. <laughs> yeah. So, these are these are kind of they're not fully out there with like the kind of American sound, but they're they're kind of halfway almost. You know, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, they're not the. BBC English kind of speaker, traditional speaker sound. They're not the kind of kick-ass American rock speaker sound. They're kind of a bit more in the middle, I think. Sure. Um, but sure. but by your standards, you know, for any, someone who's listening to LS three five A's and Quad sixty uh, threes, then they're a bit of a shocker for you, weren't they? Well, you've got to remember, I've also got some Saras and some Isobarics yes. as well. Yeah. Um, and I thought they'd be sort of more akin to the Saras, um, but for me, the bass was just a just a little bit out of control. Yeah. Um, and, and look, it's not like we didn't try it with more than one amplifier. We tried it with two or three different yeah. amps, particularly a pre-power, which you're very close to your heart, which we know very well, yeah. your Sony's, which are terrific. Yeah. Um, but it just didn't quite have the control, the, the bass control yeah. of these speakers, which I would which I would like. Not quite yeah. as tight. A bit, dare I say, a bit flabby. A little bit flabby for me, for my taste, yeah. for my taste. But having said that, you know... They they they're kicking out a lot of volume here. Yeah. Um. You know they're certainly capable of going loud. They're capable of you know making a big presence and a, yeah. and a big sound from a small box. Yeah. Um. 
and and so I totally get it. Yeah. Because that's you know that's what you're trying to achieve. And I think whenever you're trying to get that big sound from a small box, you're gonna have um, s- s- obstacles in the way. Yeah. Now I talk about the Saras. You know they've put two speakers in the box because it's an isobaric principle. Yep. It's a trying to get a solution to the problem. That's flawed as well. Yeah. You know they yeah. they kind of I mean. You know, people can call them disco speakers, yeah, um, and they can be a little bit like that too. So I totally get it, mm. and nobody's making this sort of perfect speaker, yeah. you know, with this amazing bass from a small box. Yeah, um, but you know, that aside, <laughs> um, I thought they did some really lovely things. Yeah, you know, I like the top end. I like the imaging. Um, you know, they, they're they're good. They look amazing. I yeah. think they look absolutely yeah. amazing. They're the, they they really um, they're the feature of the room, aren't they? You, they? They really stand out. Yeah, look well, it's kind of interesting, yeah. kind of trapezoidal if that's the right word um sort of semi-triangular kind of cabinets aren't they um which which look rather nice um and to me also the the they've got um, metal drive units as mm. well so yeah. um aluminium magnesium uh, dome tweeter i think it's 25 mil with 135 mil um uh, sorry a 152 two millimeter um uh, aluminium almag as the uh, paradigm call it Dry, uh, base mid base, um, and the result is that big port, um, presumably quite sensitive drive units, and their big um, sp- uh, waveguide for the tweeter, that they are pretty efficient. Yeah, um, yeah, they yeah, are. That's very so, true, actually. Yeah, eighty nine. Yeah, eighty nine dB, which is good for a small speaker like this, um, and uh, also a very easy load as well. Normal impedance of eight ohms, so they're not going to uh, you know blow up your uh, you're not 250 or whatever. No. no. Um, 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 you and I have both heard a lot of speakers with metal drivers, particularly treble units, which are very bright. Yeah. You know, so make your ears bleed. And yeah. they're not like that at no. all, are they? In fact, no. you know, you wouldn't really know they were metal drivers you, you, because of, because there's, yeah. they don't have that typical adverse characteristic. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so there's some really good, really great plus points. Ha- price wise, in the, in the UK, yeah, how so much I are think we talking about? 2750. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know they're they're they're, they're cheaper than uh, our favourite uh, uh, sort of medium small uh, bookshelf, which is the Neat Magistra, uh, which I think is a good few, a good maybe five hundred quid more, mm. um, certainly at least now. Um, and um, they're uh, um, you know they're they're um, very um, decent value for what they do. I think they they have a certain presentation which you either like or you don't like. Um, and most, uh, you know, granted, if you've got Kef B one one O's in your uh, in your LS three five A's or your, um, uh, you know, your Lynn speakers from the seventies, uh, which are very smooth sounding, then you certainly find that these uh, paradigm uh, founders sound quite not 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 harsh, but kind of up up there, kind of up front and, and in your face a bit, I think. Sure, I didn't mind that so much. I yeah. honestly didn't, but it was the fact that I found it difficult to follow a bass line, mm. I think, you know, because it's just gets, just got, for me, a little bit muddled. Why, because you hadn't heard yeah. one before. <laughs> I don't think really well. <laughs> You walked straight into that one. Oh, right? dear me. It's so, just going to go on for an so, awfully yeah. long time, yeah. isn't it? It really is. So, so um, yeah. but, uh, but look, beautifully made, uh, look great. Yeah. You know, they tick an awful lot of boxes and you, you, you really like them. You really like them. And yeah, yeah I did. I, I found personally, um, that, um, I, I needed to kind of really settle into them, um, as well. I, I was sort of a bit at first. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're a little bit different. Um, mm. a lot of speakers sound, you know, kind of modern generic speaker sound to me. Uh, and these have a, a slightly more kind of, uh, you know, it's like a polite, JBL horn speaker, if sure, that makes sure. any sense. Yes. Um, and so very good for rock. Um, and yes, the bass can be a little a little full. Um, certainly you'd need, ideally, to put them on 24-inch um, stands, move them out of the, from the back wall quite a bit. Yes. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, and, pl- and position them carefully. Um, but they, they have a certain charm, a certain inaccurate charm, if that makes any, any sense, I guess. I think, I think you've, you know, you've, you've, you've said all the right things yeah. there. I think you need to, we, this is something which, which is pretty obvious and we don't even need to say it, but you do need to think about speaker positioning, pretty much every speaker you have. But yeah. I'd say particularly with these, yes. because they've got that, that quite a big old 
rear facing port yep. base port absolutely um, and you know it, it's 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 clearly sort of been rooted around the speaker because it's at the yeah. top of the speaker yeah. rather than below the uh, you know adjacent yeah. to the to the base unit so i actually think placement's probably very yeah. key on these and i also so. i would also think as well that your typical typical canadian listening room might be a little bit bigger than uh, in the uk um you know maybe not hugely but um you know, American listening rooms That's certainly true. tend to be, yeah. uh, you know, a little bit more crowded in this island, aren't we, than, than many places. Um, yes. So, you know, they maybe work more in their kind of natural habitat uh, a, a bit better. Um, but I, I found that, um, so I think with speakers, you, um, it, it all comes down to your taste, doesn't it? Very much. And, and it, as more a high- More than anything else, yeah. more than any yeah. other high fi yeah. component. Absolutely. And as a hi-fi reviewer, it is so difficult for doing like, like speaker group tests and things like that. Yes. You know, because you, you can try really hard and you just get five or six different variations of what the manufacturer thinks something should sound like, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, and um, some of, they've all, always got their plus points, they've always got their minus points, uh, and, and it's ultimately down to what suits you. And I guess it's the same with buying a car or a motorbike or... or even clothes, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, um, and, and, and you know so, what you do with clothes. You actually try them on and see if you look yeah, okay in them. And yeah. that's what you need to do with these speakers. You know, mm. you need to find somewhere um, who's, who's sort of selling them and actually have a proper listen. You know, yeah. go to a, a decent hi-fi dealer and book a demo and, and have yeah. a listen. Because, you know, I may be totally wide of the mark here. And, you know, you might think that they're yep. best speakers ever. Um, well, it is interesting because so, we often agree a lot with speakers, don't mm, we? Yes, yeah. So yeah. we tend to, if you kind of think there's like a Venn diagram or something, and yeah. there's, there's Mike and David, and there's you a your bit... white coat for this and your pens. <laughs> 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 I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just go and change. So, um, you know, there's often a big crossover area, isn't there? Yes. Uh, for us, where we, yeah. we agree. And this one falls just a little bit outside it, more onto the my my bit of the circle as it were yes um and um but i i um yeah it, it's i think it's great to have a choice because um you know it's for so many years in this country we got a kind of certain type of sound mm -hmm. we had a, we've always had a very uh, crowded speaker market so it's always been diff difficult for foreign speaker manufacturers to get any traction in the UK. Yes. You know, partly because we've had a very good, very, very good, exceptionally good number of hi-fi speaker companies, haven't we? We have, yeah. We've pioneered yeah. it, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, if you're in the UK, you, and that's why, again, things like the Yamaha NS1000 never really got got no, hold of. amazing, yeah. Because <coughs> yeah. everyone was saying, oh, you need a Kef this or, a, you know, a Celestian that or whatever. Yeah. And in fact, um, even Sony did some really good ES speakers yeah. uh, in the yeah. sort of late eighties, early nineties, and they just didn't sell at all. Absolutely, um, yeah, which those, is a great shame. Those APM so, yeah. things. That's it. Yeah, Ac active piston motion was it? Accurate, so piston accurate, motion? accurate pistonic motion, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there we go. That's uh, very good. Yeah. Very good. So you know, it brings a, it's a kind of interesting philosophical question, I think, mm. um, and. Um, but I would certainly say, if you're wanting something lively and punchy in a small uh, stand mount uh, for around this sort of £2,500-ish price point, they're definitely worth listening to. Uh, yeah, and also, yeah. you know, as I say, they're beautifully made. They're, yeah. they're rock solid. And, and I, personally, I think they look absolutely fantastic. Um, and, and, and they're sort of 90% of the way there for me. Yes, so, but, yes. You know, but really good. Uh, let's, let's, do a, let's do our best to do a hi-fi riffometer. Yeah, on, on on them, shall we? I'd go for an eight and a half. Would you? Okay, yep. okay, that's fair enough. And and I, you know, I know you like them, and I can see why you like yep. them as well. I'm not going to go that high. I'm going to give them a seven though, yep. because they do tick an awful lot of boxes, yep. and they do have the best binding post I've ever seen in my life. Being a socket rear socket, socket botherer, socket botherer. Thank you very much. <laughs> so there you go. So so it's definitely a few extra points with the socket yes. botherer of nature. So it's, of it's three points for the speaker <laughs> and four points for the sockets from, from my from Mike there. <laughs> and on that so, on that note. <laughs> On that bombshell. <laughs> so. Thank you very much indeed for watching uh, this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Cheers. We'll see you at the next one. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.